This is an incredibly influential film. Absolutely. Every little moment works perfectly. It only gets better each time you see it. Adio. It is the definition of filmmaking at its best. And it just lights up the screen. It kind of blows all the competition away. It's essential. Vaguely familiar. Yes. You feel you've seen me somewhere before. Mm-hmm. Funny how I have that effect on people. It's something about my face. It's a nice face. You think so? I wouldn't say it if I didn't. Oh, you're that type. What type? Honest. Not really. Good, because all these women frighten me. So were you determined to pick at least one Hitchcock movie for the you, essentials? You, yeah, you have to. Yeah, I think it's, I think you could be arrested if you didn't. What was your debate? Like what ones did you consider um, or did it go right to North by Northwest? I didn't go right to North by Northwest. I think that, um, you know, I, I, lo I love Notorious. I love Rear Window, uh, Psycho, Vertigo, Sugar O's. I don't know, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, inadvertent lyrics there. Um, <laughs> but I think I landed on North by Northwest because it's kind of a fever dream of a Hitchcock movie. You know, it's, it's sort of like if you got infected with Hitchcock and then went into delirium, you'd have North by Northwest because there are all these weird, uh, borderline ridiculous images like them crossing the faces of Mount Rushmore at the end. I mean, but how great is that? Ernest Lehman wrote the screenplay, and, and at some point, either before or I think actually when they'd finished, when they're shooting it, he thought, uh, we're going to make or we have made the Hitchcock picture to end all Hitchcock pictures. So there you go. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, you mentioned the, the faces of uh, Mount Rushmore. We can start there because that is just a crazy story. The Department of the Interior wouldn't let them shoot on Mount Rushmore. That part's understandable. So they built it. Right, but then the Department of the Interior didn't want to let them climb on the faces of their rebuilt version of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I don't know how that was going to get enforced, but apparently the Department of the Interior has great power. Yes, and they're very serious about movies. So that action really <laughs> takes place sort of amongst the faces, but not crawling on the faces. No, we can't go up, you know, Jefferson's nose. And they couldn't shoot inside the UN, which is a, a critical part of the early portion of the movie. So we see Cary Grant go in, and that had to be shot from a van across the street, just showing right. Cary Grant run in. And then and then they recreated the inside, because Hitchcock went in and secretly took pictures so that he yeah, could rebuild but, it. But that's sort of the spirit of the movie. Is yeah. it's, it, it goes to... Uh, you know, ridiculous lengths to have these Hitchcocky weird moments like that. And and also, you know, Cary Grant is, along with Jimmy Stewart, kind of the ultimate Hitchcock lead. And Eva Marie Saint is just fantastic with him. To a long and lasting friendship. Meaning from now on, I'm not going to let you out of my sight, sweetheart. I'm afraid you'll have to. And of course, their supporting characters are James Mason and Martin Landau, early role, and uh, Leo G. Carroll, and all these people that you know very much from later work that they did. And it just has this wit and charm and energy, a fantastic score by Bernard Herrmann. If you're gonna dream team uh, a Hitchcock movie, it has to have a score by Herrmann in it. It's like if you multiplied Hitchcock times Hitchcock, you'd end up with this movie. Yeah, it's 136 minutes long, which the studio hated, but Hitchcock had final cut, so it was gonna stay 136 minutes long. And it flies by, it's totally. not a slow moving yeah. movie. And it has probably the ultimate, if you were gonna pick one, one sequence, you know, it, the crop dusting sequence is like it. And how iconic is that image of Cary Grant running from the plane? Um, I mean, it's, it's one of those, you know, top 10 Hollywood images that you could have. All right, let's watch the movie. Here it is from 1959, Cary Grant, Eva Marie St. James Mason, and the great Martin Landau and Alfred Hitchcock's North by Northwest. This is filmmaking <laughs> at its best. It's essential.
Very famous Hitchcock symbolism there at the end of the film <laughs> yes. with the train, in case there's any ambiguity for people. Uh, so even Marie Saint, who was a great friend of ours at TCM, uh, not a typical Hitchcock blonde, at least when you think about it on the surface, five years earlier she makes uh, On the Waterfront, waterfront. right, yeah, yeah. And, and, and where she is certainly not glamorous. Most of her roles prior to this uh, weren't glamorous roles, but Hitchcock uh, wanted her, wanted her uh, from the start, and his great quote about her is, I watched every hair on her head. He controls everything about his leading ladies, and Eva Marie Saint w was no exception. The wardrobe presented to him, he didn't like it, so he took her shopping at Bergdorf Goodman. And wow, then, I didn't know that. And then together they, they picked out her wardrobe for the film. I have a frock in mind for you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, she is fantastic, and she is glamorous in this film, and very uh, adult in a, in a fun way. There's a sexual tension that's fun in this movie. I, I think anybody that's younger watching this goes, I want to be one of those grown-ups one day. Oh, no question, yeah. I mean, her, her Eve Kendall has a, uh, I think it has a, a, a degree of sort of, uh, of subtlety and humanity that some of the other Hitchcock leading ladies lacked in their performances for Hitchcock, probably because that's how he wanted it. I'm not knocking them as actresses, but I think Eva Marie sort of, there's a, uh, there's more to her than, than many of those other characters. Yeah, and she's so good in those scenes where she's uncomfortable with uh, James Mason and kind of caught between her and Grant and, and, you know, finds the matchbook and, man, it's just great stuff. Um, MGM wanted uh, Sid Charisse in that role. They had her under contract. They tried to force her on Hitchcock. But again, it's Hitchcock. He gets to decide everything. And he was like, nope. And uh, uh, Cary Grant, because he'd completely fallen in love with her on Houseboat, he wanted Sophia Loren. But, wow. But again, so, uh, you know, to, but Hitchcock, again, he wanted Eva Marie Saint, and Eva Marie Saint it was going to be. In fact, the whole movie comes out of Hitchcock's ability to do whatever he wants. He and Lehman were working on a script for The Wreck of the Merry right, Deer. Right, right. And then after a while, Lehman thinks he's failing out. And that's what the studio thought he was doing. For some months after the point where Lehman goes to Hitchcock and he goes, I can't, we're, it's not working, I, I should quit. And, and Hitchcock says, according to Lehman, Ernie, don't be silly. Let's just write something else. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah right. that's great. And then they write this. Yeah, and, and I think that the film was originally called In a Northwesterly Direction or something. And uh, uh, they ended up uh, just kind of winging this film in a, in a weird, weird way. Not to say that it's slipshod or it's, it's anything but, but it is uh, crafted on kind of a, let's sit down and, and fill a movie full of cool stuff and then connect it somehow. And they did. Brad, uh, as always, great stuff. Fun Thanks. to talk Hitchcock really, with you. Really enjoy being here. Here's a quick look at what's coming up next time on The Essentials with Brad Bird. The Searchers from 1956. The Searchers has a painterly quality that is unique to it. It feels like illustrative art. I think it's safe to say The Searchers is probably the definitive John Ford movie, and it also stands as one of the great performances of John Wayne's career. That'll be the day. Jeffrey Hunter, Vera Miles, Ward Bond, the young Natalie Wood. The casting is wonderful for this movie. That's next Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Continue the conversation on Facebook and Twitter using the hashtag TCM Essentials. Thanks for joining us for The Essentials.